Hey, what's up everybody? 8-Bit Flashback here. Today we'll be checking out a couple new products that will be hitting the market here very soon. The Rochambeau Super Famicom case and a new single board computer, the Rock Pro 64. The Rock Pro 64 is the most powerful single board computer released by Pine64. It's powered by the RK3399 processor with 6 core chip and 2 ARM Cortex A72 CPU cores, 4 Cortex A53 cores, and the Mali T860 MP4 graphics, with a choice of either 2GB of RAM or 4GB. And these CPUs can reach speeds right around 2GHz, and the board even features a PCI Express slot and USB C. So, this is a pretty impressive little board, especially for the price, and this is capable of playing a lot of different systems for retro gaming. For an operating system, I'm using a beta image from the RetroRena team, which is a highly modified port of RetroPie, which they are hoping to release by summer. And this is more than capable of emulating Super Famicom and Super Nintendo, and many other systems, but it can also emulate Dreamcast and Sega Saturn fairly well. And other more advanced systems could possibly be supported in the future as well, because spec-wise, the Rock Pro 64 has a lot to offer. It's just a matter of developers porting these new emulators over to the Rock Pro 64. Here is Mr. Bones for the Sega Saturn. This is a very unique game in which you die if you lose all your bones, or if you don't play your instruments correctly. You get to play guitars and drums and all kinds of things. This is definitely one of my favorite games for the Saturn. And this is the Rochambo retro gaming case designed for the Rock Pro 64. But they also have plans to make it compatible with the Rock 64, Asus Tinkerboard, and the Raspberry Pi 3 through the use of special adapters and add-ons. It has a functional power button and reset button with safe shutdown. And my favorite part about this case is that the cartridge slot is functional with optional cartridge shaped SSDs that can plug in via a SATA connection that will be available to purchase separately in either 128GB or 256GB models. There will also be matching controllers that look awesome and those are going to be sold separately as well. And I will be reviewing the SSD cartridges and controllers here in a couple weeks. I'm just waiting for those to arrive still. Here's a size comparison of my Rochambeau case next to my very ugly original Super Famicom and my Retroflag Super Famicom case. So it's a little bit bigger than a standard mini size case and I'd say it's at about a 75% scale. So it's right in between everything here. And as far as the quality and detail goes on this Rochambeau case, it seems to be very nice and I'm very impressed so far. So let's go ahead and start building the case. Here's some of the included items that come with the case. A fan and a heat sink combo and quite a few different adapters and screws. For the Rock Pro 64, I'm using the four gigabyte model with a 12 volt, three amp power supply. So you wanna go ahead and start with just taking that case apart and it should not be screwed together. So just take the top of that case off and that'll give you access to this circuit board right here, which controls the reset and power buttons. And that power button will actually be loose. Just go ahead and grab that button and set that to the side for now. Then go ahead and remove this board right here. So this has your power and reset buttons along with the front two USB ports. And for now, we can just set this board to the side. Here's a look at the bottom half of the case and there's gonna be one more small board inside here. And what this is used for is to extend a couple of the USB ports that's gonna be on that Rock Pro 64. So on the back, you'll get a USB-C port and an extra USB port. Now I'm gonna grab my Rock Pro 64 board and place that inside the bottom half of the case with that HDMI port lining up towards the back of the case. And you notice there's gonna be a couple lips here, a lip on this side and then a clip on the other. So that board slides under the lip right here. And then we push it down and it snaps underneath that other lip that's located right here. And I'd recommend being really gentle when doing this. Don't get carried away with too much force and just press really close to where that clip's located and it should push right down. And when it's in place correctly, it should line up with three holes that's on the bottom of the case. And now we're gonna secure that board with three different screws. So we got one in these two corners and one on the other back corner. Now the board's secured with these three screws. Now it's time to install our fan and heat sink combo. So we'll start with applying the heat sink tape to the back of the fan. And there's gonna be plastic on both sides of that tape. So we just remove one side and go ahead and press it on the fan. And once you get that on, go ahead and take the other side of the plastic off before we go ahead and set that on top of the board. The fan secures to the Rock Pro 64 board with a couple different spring clips. And you wanna make sure you have those wires for the fan facing towards the front of the case. Otherwise, it won't be long enough to plug in. And here's an up close look at those clips that secure to the case. So when you push these down, they secure into the hole and then the spring keeps tension on it, locking it in place. And again, you wanna be very gentle when you go to push these clips in place. Go ahead and use your finger to help support that board to give it some extra support. That way it doesn't cause any extra stress on that board when you secure these clips. Now it's time to go ahead and plug in your fan and there's gonna be a red and black wire and that red wire is gonna line up with the plus sign that's gonna be on that fan connection. 
that's closest to the GPIO pins. And most of these connections do have little notches on them, that way they can only plug in one way, but it is better to be safe than sorry later. Now it's time to plug in our USB-C extension cable, and the right angle side is going to plug into the front of the Rock Pro 64 board, located right here. And then the other end is going to plug into this small board back here at the back of the case. So this one's real simple to do. It just slides into this bottom port, and then into the back port. And here's an up close look at the connection. And now let's move on to the next cable. So this is our USB 3.0 cable. And that's going to plug into that top port right above the USB-C. And then the other end we're going to leave unplugged for now. That's going to plug into that top board, but we're not ready for that yet. Now here's our USB 2.0 cable. And that's going to plug into the top port right here. And that's also going to plug into our top board that's going to be going on here in just a second. So we're going to leave that other end unplugged for now. And this is our main connection cable that connects to our GPIO pins. And there's going to be some white and black wires. And these white wires need to face towards the outside of the Rock Pro 64. So if you're viewing the Rock Pro 64 from this angle, you need to plug this cable into the upper right corner of the GPIO pins with the white wires facing out. This step is very important because if you plug this in wrong, it will give you issues. Now it's time to plug in the cable that has a white end and a red end. And we'll plug in the white end to this port right here that's on this smaller board. And this particular cable does have notches to indicate which direction it does plug in. And I would like to mention with all of these connections, you want to make sure that they're pushed all the way in place. Otherwise, they might not work because they're not making contact. Now it's time to install that top board. And this is the top of it, where the power and reset button are, and here is the bottom. And on the front of the board, there's going to be a couple small holes you're going to line up with right by the USB ports. So right here, and on the other side, there's another small hole. And that's going to line up with the two holes right here and the two small pins. So be very careful here because those pins are really small. But just kind of tilt it at an angle, and then it should pop right down. So I'm just going to carefully secure that board into place, but I'm not going to secure it down with my screws yet. I'm going to wait till I make all my connections first. And when you push that board down in place, make sure all your wires are clear and you're not pinching any of the wires. So I'm going to start with the main cable that has the black and white wires. And I'm going to feed it through the back right here, underneath this arm. And that's going to plug into the top. And there's going to be two notches on this plug-in right here. And that's going to line up with the two notches that are on a connector that's on this top board. So the two notches are going to plug in right here with the white wires facing up. Now we're going to go to the opposite side of the board and plug in the next connection. And that's going to be that wider connection that's located right here. So that will be this cable. So it also has a couple notches on it and it only plugs in one direction. So we'll go ahead and get that pushed into place. And there's a look at it after it's plugged in. And now we're going to plug in this white cable right here. And that will plug into this second port located right here. And there will be notches on this connection to indicate which way it plugs in. And the last connection is going to be this red one, and it'll plug into that front port right there. And there will also be notches on that one, so it only plugs in one direction. Now it's time to secure that top board, and that will secure with six different screws, one in each corner, and then a couple in the middle. And make sure before you secure that board that all the wires are clear, and that nothing's going to get pinched or damaged. Also, be mindful of where that fan is. If any of those wires are coming in contact with the fan, that may cause it to work incorrectly. And here's a final look at all the connections before we go and put the top lid on. You got all your ports lined up in the back there. You got our micro SD card slot that's on the side. And our front USB ports there. And my kit did come with an optional bracket to secure this top board, which I didn't need since it already has a plastic bracket. But if I find another use for it, I'll let you know. Now it's time to put the power button in place and it will have a notch on it that lines up with the on off button. So you'll put that in place before you put the lid on and then make sure that power button is functional. Make sure it's lined up correctly. As long as it is, go ahead and flip it over and then put the four remaining screws in the bottom of the case. After you get those four screws in, you are done. Now here's a look at the finished product. If you open that port, that gives you access to that SATA connection. And what's cool about this connection is that if you have an old hard drive that's laying around that has a SATA connection on it, it will fit. It is a pretty tight fit when you're trying to put it in there, but it does indeed fit. Now it does look a little bit funny with this sticking out because it is so tall and there's no case around it. But with the custom cartridges that you can order with this case, they are a little bit shorter and they seem to be customized to look more proper and fit the case better. But I did notice with those custom cartridges, as far as the width goes, they do seem a little bit narrow. 
But nevertheless, I think these custom cartridges are going to be awesome. And the fact that the eject button actually works with these cartridges, just like the original Super Famicom, is very cool. Okay, it is time for me to go, but I will have multiple videos coming out about the Rock Pro 64, the Retrina image that will be working on this, and that Rochambeau case. And if you like this video, if you could, hit that like button, and have yourself a great day, and I'll see you next time.